You know, an ecological experiment is bold when even other scientists are laughing at it. Picture this, a team of ecologists wading into the overgrown edges of Lake Tana, Ethiopia's largest lake, carrying nothing but plastic containers full of tiny beetles. No high-tech gear and no chemicals, just bugs. And their mission to save one of East Africa's most threatened freshwater ecosystems, it sounded absurd, reckless even. People joked that they were just feeding the swamp. But now, two years later, the critics are quiet. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Very quiet. Because what's happened in Lake Tana has stunned everyone, from skeptical farmers to international researchers. The beetles didn't just survive, they changed everything. They triggered a chain reaction that flipped the lake's ecosystem on its head without a single machine or drop of herbicide all of it fueled by a species most people wouldn't even notice. You're about to see how a few bugs brought one of Africa's most iconic lakes back from the edge and why no one's laughing anymore. When I first heard the plan, I honestly thought it was satire. A team of scientists in Ethiopia standing at the edge of Lake Tana, releasing thousands of beetles into its waters like some weird ritual. But their goal was noble – save one of the most ecologically and economically vital freshwater ecosystems in East Africa with insects, not machines, not chemicals, just bugs. People laughed, and to be fair, I kind of did, too. Perhaps you would, too. Lake Tana isn't just any lake. It's the largest in Ethiopia, the source of the Blue Nile, and a lifeline for millions of people. But in recent decades, it's been losing that fight. The enemy water hyacin, a beautiful but brutal invasive plant. It spreads fast, suffocates native vegetation, and turns biodiverse waters into monoculture swamps. Boats can't pass, fish die off, and even water access becomes nearly impossible in some areas, and no amount of chopping or spraying could stop it. So scientists turn to a last resort option – biocontrol, specifically two species of South American beetles. Neochetina ecorniae and Neochetina bruchii. These beetles aren't random pests. They evolved alongside water hyacinth and feed on almost nothing else. In places like Uganda, Kenya, and parts of Asia, they've already shown promise. But to many local officials and researchers, the idea of introducing foreign insects into a fragile lake system sounded dangerous and irresponsible. Even you're replacing one invasive with another, critics warned. We don't need another cane toad disaster. On paper, they had a point. No one wanted to trade one ecological crisis for another. But the science behind these beetles was compelling. They're highly host specific. If there's no hyacinth, they die. That built in limitation made them surprisingly trustworthy. So the experiment began quietly. No fanfare and no press conference. Just teams of researchers in small boats depositing beetles onto dense mats of hyacinth and crossing their fingers. For weeks, nothing seemed to happen. The plants kept spreading, locals kept watching, and the skeptics, they had a field day. This is what desperation looks like, one environmental blog quipped. But nature doesn't perform on a schedule. These beetles were playing the long game. While the hyacin looked untouched from a distance, a battle was unfolding below the surface. The beetles laid eggs deep in the stems. Larve tunneled inside, weakening the plant structure, slowly, almost imperceptibly. The hyacin started collapsing, leaves yellowed, mats thinned. Water for the first time in years became visible in areas once clogged with green. It wasn't dramatic and it wasn't overnight, but something had shifted the joke was starting to wear off. Even the skeptics went quiet because while it still looked like a swamp war from above under the surface, Lake Tana was fighting back and the tiniest soldiers, barely the size of a fingernail, were leading the charge. By the end of the first rainy season, Something strange started happening in Lake Tana. Entire sections of water hyacinth mats, once dense enough to walk across, began to collapse, not drift away, but collapse like something was eating them from the inside out. And that's exactly what was happening. The beetles, especially Neochetina icorniae, had reached a critical threshold. Enough adults were chewing through leaves and stems during the day while their larvae were burrowing inside at night. They didn't just nibble, they sabotaged the plant's structure. Once the hyacinth's internal tissues weakened, it lost buoyancy, mats began to sink, and when they did, sunlight finally punched through the water's surface. Native aquatic plants, long suffocated, began to grow back. 
tiny green shoots re-emerged in the shadows of their former invader. And this is where everything changed, because once those native plants returned, so did the life that depended on them. Fish populations that had sharply declined over the years, especially tilapia and barba species, started bouncing back. Local fishers reported higher catches in areas that had been choked just months earlier. Birds returned to old nesting sites. Frogs could be heard again along the reopened marsh edges. It was subtle at first, almost too quiet to notice. But for communities living along the lake, it felt like Lake Tana was finally breathing again. Still, not everyone was ready to call it a win. It's probably temporary, one local farmer told a journalist. The plants will come back. After all, people had been burned before by short-term cleanups that always seemed to reverse within months. But that's the thing. This time, it didn't reverse. The beetles didn't leave. In fact, they spread. They began hopping from one infested inlet to another, carried by wind and water. Each new patch of hyacinth they colonized began to deteriorate faster. What once took months now took weeks, and unlike humans, these beetles didn't need salaries or rest. They just worked quietly, relentlessly, without chemicals or machines. It was nature turning on itself, but in a good way, and it didn't go unnoticed. Satellite images of Lake Tana showed measurable declines in water hyacinth coverage for the first time in nearly a decade. Nosses that had abandoned cleanup projects were suddenly re-engaging. Ethiopia's Ministry of Water and Energy, once skeptical of the project, issued a quiet endorsement. We are observing positive developments, their spokesperson said. Scientists who had been mocked in the early days of the release were now being invited to speak at conferences. The tone had changed. The swamp, once seen as a symbol of environmental failure, was rewriting its story. Not through flashy interventions, but through a quiet, persistent rebellion. A biological uprising led by a bug that fits on the tip of your finger. And just like that, the laughter started to fade. By year two, it wasn't just that the beetles had survived, they'd exploded. Entire swaths of Lake Tana were teeming with them on leaves, inside stalks, even flying across small distances to colonize new hyacinth mats. Their numbers had grown so dramatically that researchers stopped manually relocating them. They didn't need to. The beetles had become self-sustaining, and they were doing the job better than anyone imagined. And it wasn't just brute force, it was precision. These beetles weren't attacking native plants. They weren't spreading beyond their target zones. Their impact was hyper-focused, like nature's version of a guided missile system. Scientists called it target-specific suppression. Locals just called it a miracle. Remember, these same communities had once begged for outside help, massive machines to dredge the lake, international aid to fund endless herbicide programs. But now they were watching the swamp clear itself. One fisherman told a regional paper, We used to lose nets and boats in that weed. Now the water's moving again. We're catching fish where we haven't fished in years. But the beetles didn't stop at just giving the water back. They began reshaping the entire ecosystem. With light penetrating the water again, oxygen levels surged. Phytolankton rebounded. That meant more food for fish, which meant more food for birds. A cascade effect rippled through the lakes' food web. What started as a war against an invasive weed had triggered a full ecological reboot. And the science backed it up. Independent assessments by Addis Ababa University confirmed significant reductions in hyacinth biomass by up to 75% in the most heavily infested zones. In places where beetle density was highest, hyacinth regrowth remained almost zero even after six months. That kind of stability was unheard of in wetland restoration, and it was all coming from something that weighed less than a paperclip. But what really turned heads was how the beetles behaved like a living infrastructure. Once established, they regulated themselves. When hyacinth levels dropped, so did beetle populations. No overcorrection and no spillover into unintended areas. It was as if the ecosystem had found its own thermostat set to balance. By now, the international community had taken notice. Delegates from Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda, countries also battling water hyacinth invasions, began visiting Lake Tana to study the program. Some even called it a model for low-cost, high-impact environmental intervention. The same project that was laughed at in the beginning was now getting invited to global climate panels. The irony wasn't lost on anyone, and through it all, the Beatles kept working, silent, tireless, and completely unaware they were now the unlikely heroes 
of one of the most remarkable ecological comebacks in recent memory. They didn't just take over the hyacinth, they took over the narrative. What had begun as a bizarre gamble had become a turning point, but the real payoff that was still ahead. Two years ago, Lake Tana was a cautionary tale. Today, it's a case study in how quickly nature can rebound when you give it the right tools. Those tools here are still beetles. The difference now is almost surreal. The water that once looked like a solid mat of green is clear again. Small waves lap against reed beds. You can see reflections. Boats no longer get trapped in floating vegetation. Fishermen glide through channels that were once thick enough to walk on. The smell, once and rotten, is clean. Even the air feels lighter. And the best of all, no one is laughing anymore. The early mockery, those headlines, those sound bites, has aged poorly because two years later, the results speak louder than the laughs. According to a 2024 report by Ethiopia's Ministry of Water and Energy, more than 13, zero hectares of water hyacinth have been suppressed or eliminated from Lake Tana. Over 80% of previously choked fishing zones are now usable again. Native plants like cypress, papyrus, and aconacoa are re-establishing themselves, and the beetles. They've naturally balanced themselves to match the availability of their only food source. This effort wasn't just environmental cleanup, it was restoration with intelligence. There were no chemicals or bulldozers used in this restoration process, just an invasive species turned on itself, guided by a precise, well-researched biological strategy. The ripple effects have been even bigger than expected. Communities once dependent on aid are now exporting more fish. Wetland birds like the African jacana and crowned cranes have returned in numbers not seen in a decade. Even tourism once dead due to the swampy, inaccessible shoreline has started to rebound with boat tours popping up again. One guide even confessed people come here to see the lake that cured itself. It didn't. Of course, it wasn't magic, it was science. Specifically, a team of ecologists who refused to give up on a natural solution even when they were mocked for it. They trusted the data, took the risk, and let the beetles do what they evolved to do. The result? A lake that's not just recovering, but thriving. And this matters far beyond Lake Tana. Because what happened here challenges how we think about restoration. We don't always need million-dollar machines or massive government overhauls. Sometimes the answer is small, specific, and patient. And yes, maybe even laughable at first. But two, years later, there's nothing funny about Lake Tana's comeback. It's serious, it's impressive, and it's ongoing. So, if someone tells you next time that a bug can't fix an ecosystem, show them this. Show them what happened when scientists let beetles loose. Everyone laughed until nature laughed last. What do you think? Would you have trusted a plan like this where you live? Drop your opinion in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.